I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now wake up! It's time to look at the end. What's up, everybody? Welcome to The Comment Writers. This is episode 11. We're here to discuss Common Rider Geats episode 11 as well. I'm your host, Josh Meek, the Uber Geek, joined as always by Toby Tobes. What's up, Toby? Not much. Living the thank post Thanksgiving dream. How was uh, how was your Thanksgiving? It was full of gaved thanks <laughs> and lots of food <laughs> we, and running around like always. <laughs> we should have talked about Thanksgiving last episode. We didn't. We were too excited about other things. But uh, I'm happy to hear that that um, thanks were given and hopefully received. Um, no, probably we, not. <laughs> probably yeah no no <laughs> do, do you have a lot of like running around to, to different thanksgivings is that you do yeah so in general for most holidays it's at least a, a three family adventure like three distinct stops okay uh, other than christmas which is always like four Whew, yeah that's that's a lot for for christmas we do like we do hours and then we do like two more in addition to that so like not terrible, but you know, got a, got a couple we we hit up. But for Thanksgiving now, we we host Thanksgiving for both sides of our family. So so you started pulling the there's a child here, everyone's coming here card. So that was the initial reason that we did it was like like because so my my daughter was born like literal days before Thanksgiving. So she was born. We were home. Like we're obviously not traveling anywhere with like a, a days old uh, child. But people could come to us. So so we did that for the first Thanksgiving. And then now after that, yeah, it's like, you know, year one, like it's like eh, it's still easier if people come to us. And like she's by far the youngest kid in either side of the family. So, hey, like come come see her hang out in her house. We'll get to stay longer and stuff like that. Um, so now like she's old enough, we can obviously travel but it's nice because we now have a history of uh hosting thanksgiving and it goes super well and we have you know um space for people and you know it's it's somewhat centrally located for sort of both sides of the family so we've created this this beautiful scenario where like yes people come into our house but we don't have to make multiple trips we don't have we have a single thanksgiving we do now look at Um, you feels like we've really hacked it and especially <laughs> especially as like i'm not super involved in like the food production because my wife loves doing that and that's like that's her scene um so like she she does most of the cooking and i don't have to really do that much <laughs> so it's it's really uh it's a win-win for me so it, it's funny you say that because like we're gonna go we're gonna call upon like the historic roles of things uh-huh so thanksgiving in general like i feel like the old school vibe was like the mom prepares the meals while well, the dad like lays around and watches football all day. But I know you're like not super geared in the sports. So it's like you can't even pull the flex of like, oh, honey, the game's on. I can't get up now. Like I just picture you like walking around, like opening a pack of Pokemon cards and going, yep, uh, I really can't help with the turkey right now. I got to see what's in this pack. No, mine's, mine's more uh, playing with the kids. That's usually <laughs> that's usually my vibe. I'm just like. <laughs> And yeah, sometimes it's video games or whatever, because <laughs> again, we're we're at my house. So like we also get to go downstairs and play the arcade cabinet and stuff like that. But I like how we're just like, I want to play games today. If anyone wants to come with me, come along. <laughs> I, I can't wait until like my daughter is old enough for that to be the vibe. It's like right now, like I like playing games with her, but it still requires like playing something generally I wouldn't otherwise play and like a lot of tutorial right like okay yeah you gotta press that button like okay don't press the home button because that that closes the game um it's like a lot of that stuff and you know like her attention span for it isn't super long and stuff but i'm really looking forward to the time where like she she can just be like a lazy bum like me too and and i can be like do you just want to go downstairs and play games and she can just be like yeah let's just let's do (laughs) (laughs) let's escape (laughs) yeah (laughs) because that that'll be that'll be great I'm I'm slowly, slowly, I think, building building that for her. Her her attention span for board games is increasing as well. So we well, that's uh, good because I feel like most most of those is at least like even like the the more kid ish games like bare minimum even like a half hour. I feel like for any like remotely decent board game that people want to play. 
Yeah, so so we started with the ones that that no one really wants to play, but like a kid can understand. So like, for example, the one she likes right now that we just got is Hi Ho Cherio. I don't know if you remember. I remember. Played. I I know that game. Okay, I had it when I was a kid too. So when I saw it in the store, I'm like, oh my gosh! Like I played this when I, when I was a kid. If you're not aware, Hi Ho Cherio is a game where you fill up a tree with cherries, and there's a little spinner, and you spin it, and it tells you how many cherries to take off the tree. Or how many cherries to like put back on. So if you hit like a dog or you hit a bird, you put two cherries back on the tree. There's also a thing you can hit where you have to put all the cherries back on the tree because you spilled your bucket and you lose all your your cherries you've already picked. Oh, Um, no. (laughs) There's no agency in the game. You, You can't do anything to affect how many cherries that you're getting or not getting other than spinning this dial. Right. So. It's a good game for like for counting if you're a kid and like knowing how many cherries you're picking off and stuff. So that's a good practice for. Uh, but yeah, that, that's like the first game really where she will sit through an entire session of it. <laughs> uh, and we, we played it twice in a row the other day, which I thought was was super impressive. So it's a board game that like it's not fun in and of itself as a game, but it's we're, we're building to bigger things. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah. But anywho, yeah, so yeah, the uh the hosting of Thanksgiving has been has been nice. Yeah, I you know, I feel like I should defend myself a little bit here. I um I, I made cook- the cranberries. <laughs> I no, I, I for Thanksgiving I really didn't do nearly anything for the with the food. <laughs> uh but in general I do I do cook. Uh you know, I I think if you're a you're a cooker, right? You you do some cooking. Or am I imagining that? <laughs> no, I do some cooking. So basically yeah. uh my girlfriend that lives with me uh, is vegetarian for a couple of years and I'm like 95% vegetarian. I usually do like one day a week where I will still eat meat. And it's usually like at the bar. I was going to say, <laughs> like, you, you like, have wings at the bar. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you so are a, a, a wings <laughs> I'm a wings But so like for what's become our tradition for Thanksgiving now is so throughout the different parts and sides of the family, there's limited to higher understandings of like vegetarian doesn't mean just mean like just eat salad so as a solution to this uh the first year when she got super into that kind of food uh we bought a tofurkey which is like the name brand but basically like it's fake meat but turkey kind of thing Mm -hmm. so since then we've done tofurkey dinner the day after thanksgiving every year because that's also black friday and that's when she does all her christmas shopping so basically, I make us save the turkeys Thanksgiving dinner on Black Friday every year. Nice. I like so this it. year, this year, Josh, we find you the menu because this was a banger of a feast. <laughs> I'm excited to hear about it. Are you ready? Yep. This year, I made meatless turkey, which is just throwing the ovens. So that's fine. So uh, wait, real quick, is that like, does it look like a turkey? Like if I looked at it, would it look like a regular bird? Like, is it in the shape of a bird? It looks like when you get like chicken cordon bleu, where it's like chicken wrapped around to something. Oh, okay. But yeah. it's like that kind of vibe. It looks, just looks, it looks like a roll of like fried breading almost, but the inside looks like actual turkey. Okay, interesting. That sounds good. So the menu this year was the fake turkey. Stuffing, mashed uh, mashed garlic potatoes, cheesy veggies and beans, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, roasted chestnuts, and I made a homemade mushroom gravy from scratch. Oh, that sounds amazing. It was a feast for the eyes and the ears. <laughs> or I guess <laughs> and, the stomach too. The, I guess it doesn't really work that way. <laughs> you've, uh, you've left out the one important sense here. <laughs> it tasted awful, but boy, did it look good. <laughs> Yeah, because because Thanksgiving really is a uh, a sides based meal. Like the, the the turkey, everyone has the turkey. Let's be honest, turkey's not that great. Like your your tofurkey is probably way better than most actual turkey is. Because uh, you know, if there's a reason we only eat turkey one time a year, it's because it's like you have to forget before next year the turkey's not really that good. But the sides of Thanksgiving are delicious. That's really where where the magic happens. So that's really more times than not. Like every year, everyone's like, oh, the turkey's so juicy this year. Oh, it's so good. But like, no matter what, it always just tastes like it's always just dry to me. Like, yeah. even on the best years, you still got to like slop it up with gravy and everything else. 
Yeah, you have to do a lot of work. This looks delicious. You sent me, you've, you've sent me pictures now that I'm looking at. You have to put it in the, the video form of this podcast okay. at commonridersucks.com yeah. if you want to have the quick link to get there. But Josh will post the pictures of the Thanksgiving feast. <laughs> Yeah, asparagus and Brussels sprouts too. This is this is officially the lamest podcast we've ever recorded. But because <laughs> because I'm out out of the words, asparagus and and uh, and and, um, and and the Brussels sprouts are two of my favorite vegetables that I uh, probably like you know five years ago wouldn't have touched. <laughs> so, so you can see like the the turkey is the big brick. <laughs> so like the turkey itself does not look like turkey, but it is very good. I, I honestly prefer that. Like if it, you know, obviously you, you know, it's not going to be real meat. And if they tried to like make it in the shape of a bird, that would have been, that would have been weirder for me, I think. So the mo- so with your asparagus love, here's the important question. Do you have the gene in your body where you smell the stinky asparagus pee after you eat it? Uh, yes. Yeah. I definitely have that sometimes. Okay. It's not like terrible, but I, I definitely have, have uh, experienced it. Because that is a specific gene that you have to have to be able to do that. I did, I did not know that. I thought that that was just a general thing that happened to everybody. So it's like um, it's like uh, cilantro tasting like soap. <laughs> yes, that was going to be that one I brought up, If just in case you didn't know that one. But yeah, luckily cilantro tastes like just herb to me. I don't have the, the soapy aversion to it. I, I've always heard of that, um, but I've never actually met someone who tastes soap <laughs> from cilantro. <laughs> so it must be pretty rare. I know a guy. I actually know a guy who oh, says okay. it always tastes horrible. It tastes disgusting. That's interesting. Yeah. So I'm. Uh, does that mean that I'm a mutant? Do you think Professor X is gonna gonna come recruit me because I have asparagus pee? No, because I think that's actually more common. Oh, like I think flame. I think I think <laughs> having the stink pee is the common one, and I think tasting not soap is the common one. So those are two genes that you know you're not gonna get recruited yet. I'm just regular. I'm just I'm just regular. <laughs> I'm not fancy. All right, that's that's fine. That's fine. All right, that's enough wholesome talk. Let's talk about Common Rider. Let's talk about it. This is episode eleven of Common Rider Geats, and um, we we talked about it last time. Episode ten was really good. Episode eleven, I think, has surpassed it for me. So let's let's dive right in. So, as a general for this this for this whole episode, it really, it made me think of something. So, like, Geats plays all the games. He's rich and famous now. He probably has some money set aside. Sure. Do you, do you know? Do you think he invests in in a traditional IRA, or is it a four hundred one k wa? That's that's better than than <laughs> Outcast and and hey hey ya from last episode. I like it. All right, I'll give you that one. Yeah, that's good. All right. Speaking of Kawa, uh, he's not around anymore in the game to do the video recap of what happened the last time. So I, I was going to so, ask you about this last time. So go ahead. Yeah. So now Sumuri is doing it for some reason. Sumi, <laughs> we call her Sumi. Sumi, yeah, it's really right. In this house, we call her Sumi. <laughs> uh, yeah, she, she like kind of inexplicably is doing the recap video, and um, Ace is sitting next to her, and, and she kind of ends it with like, "Will will will Ace be able to to win or whatever?" She says, "Or will, will he will he be taken out?" And he's like, "You really you hate me this much?" And she's like, "Yeah, yeah, I do." Because <laughs> they're still playing family, but yeah. So like the her doing the videos now, so she got mad ish. When she saw Kawa doing it, she's like, you can't broadcast this world. His video updates weren't so much about the game. They were just about his life in the game. Yeah. She's doing actual game commentary on recording to somewhere. But it's way weirder because she's doing the commentary around the people. Like the voice that you would hear is like the voiceover in a scene. Like what happens next on Dragon Ball Z kind of voice. Yeah. She's doing it sitting next to the people that are involved in what's going on, which is like <laughs> hilarious. I, but I just don't know where the videos are going. Me neither. It's very good. I, I wonder. Yeah. I mean, like, obviously with Kawa, they they happened upon like a cute way to do a recap in universe, which is always fun. But I wonder if they like then painted themselves into a corner of like, well, we want to keep doing it. But Kawa not here anymore. So like, eh, let's just have let's have Sumi do it. And who cares? Or I wonder <laughs> if it's like there's something deeper, right? Like, Oh, she's doing it. And it, it's going to the game master or it's going to whoever's, you know, pulling the game master strings. If that's a real person or like, I wonder if they're, we're going to find that out, but it's probably just a gag I would guess. But so maybe uh, it's just a gag, but from us talking about it now, what if she's doing something that I didn't really think about until now, 
now that as I'm sounding this out of my head, but so like Kawa doesn't remember being a rider, but he was a rider. He'd probably be a rider again. Does he have the video saved on his phone still <laughs> of him recording his summaries to give to his sister? So yeah, that's the question. Like, does the mind wipe also wipe your cell phone? <laughs> so if not, or if it doesn't wipe it, is she just prepping herself for if she ever gets kicked out of her role oh. as the host because she knows that her that the recordings won't get wiped and she can remember everything that happened if she has to. She's doing the 51st dates on herself. That's yes. what it is. Yeah. Yes. Interesting. Maybe. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, she, <laughs> she has to condense it down quickly wake up and like, you know, get her memories back, watch a video, recap everything. We're good. All right. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, who knows? Uh, the, the game master pops in at this point, Toby, and uh, he's dad. He's playing dad and says it's time for breakfast. And they sit down. You know, they're the happy family, still playing the happy family, except the game master says, like, listen, let's lay everything on the table. What is the point of this farce? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we find out Ace's new wish in this current game is a world where I become part of the DGP staff, become part of the Grand Prix staff. He keeps so, moving up in the world. He just wants to keep moving up. Yep. Yeah. So, so clearly that was the the breaking point for the you know game master, which which Ace doesn't know he's the game master, but uh, that was his breaking point of like, listen, we're we're doing this family thing, but like, wh- where are you going with this? What are we doing? And we talked about it a little bit last time, like the aces aces motivations here like clearly he's trying to infiltrate the grand prix trying to learn more about it at this point he's trying to win his way into a staff role clearly where then he'll know some behind the scenes information he tells the game master that yeah i'm just fascinated that's all just just (laughs) this is just an interesting life i've i've (laughs) I've led for the past two thousand games (laughs) <laughs> listen i have I, I listen i i want for nothing i'm a superstar in the world i'd really like a job now though could you <laughs> could you please let me win so you can hire me and if they hire him maybe he gets a 401k law <laughs> maybe he does yeah maybe that's why he wants to get hired <laughs> i actually think that's what made me think of that joke i think that's what <laughs> led me to my genius pun for the week that's great i'm glad i'm glad we walked back there again <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this next scene, Toby, uh, it broke my heart a little bit because once again, the game master is speaking to uh, Punk Jack, Hari Ruya Win directly. Uh, last episode, we found out that Punk Jack is sort of the game master's uh, insert into the game to take the out Aaron Geats. Boy. Yeah, his little Aaron boy. And the game master says, listen, this is the round that Geats has to be eliminated. And it this broke my heart because Sumi was there too which means that she's also in on this whole, uh, this ruse. I, I thought last episode when we were watching it, I thought that she maybe didn't know, maybe the game master is sort of doing this behind her back. Uh, but no, she's there. She says that she thought we were supposed to remain impartial, but then the game master says, that man has won enough. <laughs> so I'm going to send you a picture of the face here. But the look on her face tells me that maybe she's not involved. And that maybe she's not super thrilled about this. Like maybe she didn't know that, that there's shady shit going on and she just happened to be right place, right time kind of deal. Yeah, it could be. And then, yeah. And then tied to that, maybe like the, so Geats is trying to obviously climb the ranks here. He went from, okay, I want enough. Okay. You guys are be my family. Okay. I'm going to work for you guys. So maybe all this gets her to rebel against these sorts of scenarios. And maybe that leads to our favorite part in the intro when she pulls the gun on Geats. <laughs> maybe, yeah. I, I, I could see how that, that would tie in for sure. And yeah, I think, I think her asking like, hey, I thought we were supposed to remain impartial um, is, is sort of her pushback on this happening. But like, clearly like she then continues to go along with it at least for a little bit. So hopefully she, hopefully she rebels and fights back and um, Maybe Sumi becomes a writer at some point. Who knows? That's, and then she has all her videos and she's going to refer back to them and just know how to win. Yeah, she, she's got it all then at that point. Uh, we, if we move on, Kawa, we see Kawa again. He's still playing Scratchers. So, you know, you're, you're still a big fan of him. <laughs> and so 
funnily enough, I guess we'll call it. So from him doing the scratch offs for pretty much the next handful of scenes with him, there is a tycoon or Tanuki involved in almost everything that happens to him from this point going forward. Yeah. So like it's on the scratch off. He's playing in this scene. It's on the scratch off. He's playing in this scene. Uh, he K. I'm going to, we're going to skip ahead of just a little bit. So K. starts moping around. He doesn't really want to have, have a job. He just wants to be a the, uh, degenerate gambler. Uh, Sarah tries to motivate him. They get on the bus to go for a nice little trip together. Uh, she points out, you've never been like this before. I don't know what this new attitude is. They get on a bus. That's just them two and a small child playing a cell phone game. Uh, looks like a famous gacha game. Just, you know, just dumb. I wasted a roll. I got this dumb card. I got whatever. Uh, the kid rolled and got an exploration beast Tanuki. Yeah, yeah. And then Sarah gets all motivated. She says, no, he's good. You can raise him right. You can, you'll get a good one soon. But it's just like heavy handed, like Kawa's tycoon, Kawa's tycoon, like over and over and over. It, or, yeah, I mean, well, first of all, let me stop you. I don't think that's Sarah. I think that's a different woman. Is it? This might, this might be my face blindness again. Because <laughs> I, think, I think that Kawa gets on the bus alone and that woman is already sitting there with the boy. Like, I think her and the boy are together. No, was it? I think so. All right. I'm rewatching the scene. Kawa jumps right. on the bus, walks past the driver. He's walking to the back. He walks past them, right? Yeah, but that's only because she got on first. Like she sat Why? next to. Why'd she sit next to this random boy? I don't know. She doesn't want to sit with her mopey ass brother. <laughs> All right. I again, I have no no concept of whether that's actually her or not because apparently I'm just completely face blind. More it than has I even to be. Thought. There's only there's four people on the bus. The girl that gives him the motivational speech, like you've never been like this before. There's the small child, the bus driver, and Kawa. So I would assume now you're throwing me off. I would assume it's her. <laughs> <laughs> So Josh and I did some heavy research. We realized that he was talking to his sister before they got on the bus. But when they get on the bus, it was not his sister. I wasn't paying attention to the clothes properly. And so random girl sits next to the little boy or maybe that boy's sister and then gets involved in the whole shenanigans here. Yeah, it very much does look like a sister, to be fair. It took us a little bit. Um, but yeah, so that's a that's a random, random chick. And like you said, the, the Tanuki on the phone like again just like nodding at the fact that like you your your tanuki your tycoon um so yeah it's it's like heavy-handed winking at like this is who he's meant to be or maybe it's like this is a, a reference you're not going to get i don't think but in spider-man in the comics spider-man gets beat gets gets bitten by the radioactive spider right but then way and later turns on the husk and rebirth well, that's not where I'm going, but that that, that does happen. Yes, <laughs> he has radioactive semen and kills his wife with cancer. Uh, that also happens pretty much. But anyway, <laughs> there's a character that gets introduced way later named Ezekiel, and Ezekiel basically teaches Peter that that there's this spider totem, and like, yeah, he was bitten by a random radioactive spider, but like, it wasn't actually random, and like, there's this kind of spider totem that it was it was always destined that he was going to get these powers and that was just sort of the means of delivery of the powers and and it goes it's larger than him right like the the spider powers came before him and then were kind of bestowed upon him and then someone after him will have spider powers like that um so maybe that's what's happening here maybe the 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 tanuki is just like it's it's a tanuki totem it's wrapped up around kawa's world and it's just like swirling around him <laughs> because it's who he's really meant to be that's interesting. I, maybe it's just I, random. I, I, <laughs> no, I like I like your lore way better. <laughs> <laughs> it just seems like he can't escape it, right? It's like it's everywhere around him. Just nudging him to remember. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so the, the the bus we're on that we're mentioning here, um, the the world breaks and it falls off a cliff. Just <laughs> the whole world starts <laughs> crumbling and the bus just flies off the edge. Um, so again, the the people on the bus, which is important later. The bus driver, a random girl, a random young child, and Kawa. Uh, Neon, we're back to Neon. She's saying goodbye to her mom and dad. 
And we find out Neon's dad like kind of knew about this whole Kamen Rider stuff. Like he seems to be very in the know about what Neon has been doing, but says that she's an adult now and she could take care of herself just fine when the mom wants to kind of rush and intervene. So even with that, the mom looks at, I guess it's the plain neon buckle box. And she was like, what is even then? What, like, what, what do those guys even give her? What did that girl even give her? And dad's like, I was going to tell you someday. So yeah. obviously, oh, no, we're good. Never mind. We can continue. We'll talk about the <laughs> end of the episode. It's something just clicked <laughs> for me. <laughs> so we, again, we talked about it last, last episode. Neon's dad, he's got some shady stuff about him. Like there's some, there's some, some killer vibes going on here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Neon invites Ace to lunch. He says, thanks for the invite. I love these hangouts. Again, very <laughs> cute. I ship, I ship Ace and Neon hard. <laughs> in the show. No, that, that seems too easy. I'm going to, I'm going to, that seemed like the easy answer towards the beginning. Uh, I'm going to completely rule KY out of this at this point, which was the other guess. I want her to be independent. I want her to get to the end and be like, Geets, you're cool. I don't need any, any of you fuckers. And just be like, the boss. Oh, me too. Like, I, I for sure want that for her as a character. I love Ace's love for her. Like, I, I love the direction of Ace to Neon. I don't want her to need Ace, but I like that Ace is, like, falling for her really hard, it seems like. I gotcha. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Neon, uh, Neon asked Ace in their little hangout, why he didn't put he wanted to find his mom on his desire card and it seems like that'd be the easy thing to do if he's looking for his mom so first he does like oh you you believed me when i when i said that i was looking for my mom interesting <laughs> uh, but then he I goes on to tell her that he tried writing down you know find my mom and it didn't work so she says like oh so there are some wishes that can't be wished for some things that can't come true and then ace says Maybe it's something the staff didn't want happening. So with all those things, when he questions her and he's like, oh, you actually believe me? She said it'd be a pretty harmless lie coming from you. So I think at least she has learned if it affects the game more, he's usually kind of full of shit and will just make things up for the game. But like there was no there's no benefit of him saying, I want to find my mom. Yeah. So I guess you just automatically believed him. And so he was questioning, maybe the staff's hiding it. So we learned from last time, that's why he wants to be staff, or that's what this wish this time. But as part of that, I wonder if you can't wish for things that they can't fix. Like, is, if his mom's dead, maybe they can't let him wish to meet his mom because they literally can't fulfill the wish. Maybe. So then they, can't, they won't let him play for that because it's not something they can do. Or, or yeah, or like a tangent to that. Maybe like you can't wish for things that would like undo the creation of the Grand Prix. And maybe like his mom had something to do with the Grand Prix happening originally or something weird like that. Like, yeah, there's there's got to be something fishy going on there as far as why he can't wish for it. But I think that that leads to why he has been wishing for the things he's been wishing for of like becoming family and now becoming part of the staff as he's trying to, he's trying to infiltrate and he's trying to figure that out. Why? Like what, what do these people have against me? What's going on? He's going for espionage. The only route that's left. Yep. He says his mom is worth risking his life for, which I thought was very cute. He manned up. And when they <laughs> showed, this is the first time they really kind of show them writing on a calm, the wish cards. And like it was a pretty cool like special effect kind of thing where you kept writing on the card and kept erasing it. Yeah. Okay. So like I actually appreciate that like somehow even the card knows like we can't fulfill this wish. And <laughs> like <laughs> card says no. Uh, cards out. <laughs> uh, it's time for our new mission in the Grand Prix. They they all show up and they're ready for it and the the floating platform just disappears and they all just plummet to the earth <laughs> through a big giant hole. Um, they all land on the ground seemingly safe, uh, which is which is funny. And we find out we're in an alternate dimension created by the Geomato. They fell right in the bus hole. <laughs> right, right in the old bus hole. We know they fell in the bus hole because Kawa and the other people that were on the bus are there and they have these like weird 
briar collars around their neck. It gave me uh, Final Boss vibes, kind of. And uh, Sumi says they are civilians, and she she kind of like she like sort of glances at um, Ace and Neon when she says it. Like they're civilians taken wink, hostage. Wink, nudge, nudge. Don't be <laughs> stupid. Joke. Yeah, <laughs> like don't say anything. And we find out that round two is a maze escape game. So real quick, I want you to drop this in the video podcast. This screenshot I just sent you. I want you to look at it too. The bushes on the right side of the fence. Yep. Does that does that look like Geats's head to you? Oh yeah, I can see it. Like 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 I always do. I silently rewatch the episodes as we talk, like for things for us to discuss, just in case we miss something. And if you if you watched it, go back and look. I really think the bushes look like Geats's head, or maybe Neon's head, or Tycoon's head, or one of them. But it looks like a helmet to me almost. They are they're pretty interestingly laid out, and those bushes look a little bit different than the other shrubbery. Yeah, it almost looks like you know we we, we covered some things up and put in some new shrubs to intentionally sort of convey something. And the other thing I thought of after this one, so. They're kind of half-ass games usually, but so far they've found and they've made up, found whatever you want to call it, a new game to play every time in yeah. some way, shape, or form. Even if it was like just fight more monsters, but a different name for it, like capture the flag versus defend the tower kind of thing. Like, do you think they can find an actual new game title and like vibe to do every time, or are they going to start repeating at some point? I don't know. I, I think that if they were going to repeat, they would have been doing it at the beginning of this game like all right back to round one we're gonna do the same round one we did before so i i hope they can keep reinventing okay I that mean, seems fair obviously you know at, at this point like we're diving into the beginning of this game here the 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 vibe of this one is basically they're doing resident evil because they end up you know running through the halls of a mansion while they're being chased by a giant monster <laughs> so and when, they, and when they start showing the you nailed the game for me uh, when they eventually go inside their maze ish thing and they go through the mansion, they keep cutting to this very video gamey, cool looking like map screen. We'll call it. Yeah. Like if you hit yeah, yeah. select during a game, it brings up the map. Like the vibe is so like gamey, like, like definitely like video game vibes. I was trying to figure out which one. And like, I think resident evil pretty much nails like, Hey, they're in the greenhouse. Hey, they're in the West wing. Hey, they're in the North hallway. Like, yeah, it's, it's even complete with like blinking dots to show you where your character is. Like it, it is full on not hiding the influence on its sleeve at all, um, which I'm fine with. I, I love that they really leaned into that and did, you know, all the all the stuff that, you know, they, 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 they could have just run around a mansion. Right. But they knew they were going for like a Resident Evil esque, more like survival horror feel to it. So they did all the surrounding stuff to make it really feel like that. And I thought that that was very cool yep so they, they could totally just keep like aping video games and like doing their version of them as as new rounds i mean they it, this whole series has been very video game inspired obviously you know from the uh original you know conception of like what the you know the game is as a whole and all the various rounds that they're playing are very video game-esque so yeah like if this is just the you know the direction they're heading like i'm very excited about seeing the different things they do because this this one is very um uh it's very ambitious i guess compared to some of the previous games so i hope oh yeah for sure where they're headed it seems like there's one game per one like mini game per big game yeah they go like heavier in we're going to do something cool with this and then the rest are just like normal fight scenes so like this this probably like I feel like this is gonna be like the one for this larger game of like we're going real big on this one. And then like the later rounds just gonna be obviously be a boss battle again at some point. So that's not usually not like super environment driven kind of deal. Yeah. So like be. this is this is the good one. <laughs> it could be, yeah. Uh so in this particular game it is it's a bit of an escort mission. <laughs> um, but you, you get paired up with a civilian. And you have to keep the civilian safe, basically, throughout the course of the game. So the bus driver proves himself to be a little pervy, kind of. And he instantly, when he realizes he's getting paired up with one of the common riders, heads straight to Neon 
and starts introducing himself and saying his blood type and buffa intercepts him he's like no no <laughs> <laughs> see and now he, see he likes neon too at least like he respects her and he's like oh whatever like when i was like, yeah like, it was, was more so like excited first, yeah like this is more like the actual like like the brother sister vibe yes of like stay the hell away from her <laughs> she annoys me but stay the hell away from her Totally. Yeah. It was like, I don't like her either, but you're not allowed to, to act this way towards her, <laughs> <laughs> which it was so cool. Like, I, I love I love that a lot. And, and I, I know us nerds all obviously know um, if you're somehow watching Common Rider and not super into these kind of things, uh, him dropping the blood type is a huge thing in Japan. Yeah. Like how people find compatibility, like like horoscope ish vibe, right? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Like it goes back to, I remember playing like street fighter two. And when you watch the like character profiles that play in the attract screen, they give like each character's blood type <laughs> for yeah. no reason. So I, it's, I always, it's very it was, ingrained in the culture. Yeah. Yeah. I always knew like it was in all like a lot of the fighting games and stuff that are like super Japanese. They always have like the blood types for the characters. So at some point I learned that was the thing. So that's why when he announced, like, oh, I'm type A, it was definitely a flex of, like, <laughs> oh, I'm the good type, probably. Yeah, I'm the one that you should wife up. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I'm glad he got... Uh, I'm, I'm glad we didn't have to watch a whole episode of him just being a weirdo towards Neon. <laughs> glad Buffa stepped in. Ace gets paired up with the, the little kid, and it was super cute. They do a little fist bump, which I love. <laughs> <laughs> and then Kawa gets paired up with the old dude uh, who who is still around in the game. Very fitting. Punk Jack, however, has no one to partner up with, and he uh, is told he has to protect Sumi. Uh, so, you know, a li- little bit again, uh, finger on the scale of what's happening in this game, but pairing up uh, Sumuri with Punk Jack. So, you know, sh- she ostensibly maybe can take care of herself a little bit more than some of the other civilians. Well, not even that. So that, but again, though, that works both ways. Is he accidentally partnered up with her because he's supposed to protect her or now that she knows that there's bad things happening outside of her reach are they together so you can maybe like strike her down or like cause bad oh. things for her I, I didn't think about that that's interesting maybe maybe yeah depending on where her, her where her allegiances lie yeah as long as she behaves <laughs> you don't have to step in the the gang realize there's a big door nearby they go check it out they realize that it needs a password. Um, and then at that point, Giamato in maid costumes attack. <laughs> the classiest ones we've seen. Yeah, they're uh, they're ready to serve you and kill you. Everyone transforms. The fight uh, gets underway. And then something shocking happens. The Giamato um, are kind of speaking. They like first they hear words and then they realize that the these two specific Giamato have buckles themselves and can transform into like common rider esque characters. They um they're like bigger and like they're sort of um like uh vines kind of growing around their buckles and stuff, but like, like very much thorns, yeah. Yeah, but they're very much riders, like full on have riders, have more powerful attacks, like interact with their buckles to do sort of their power up moves and stuff. So that freaks you know, everybody out. <laughs> they definitely have finishers. Like they definitely do the same thing where like they tap the buckle, they do the call out. Yeah. And when the, so to tie into last week's question thing real quick. So when the, the buckles looked viney, but also tentacly. And I was like, man, if the freaking Jamoto are going to be freaking octopuses, like as like a more evil ish animal <laughs> kind of thing. I, I got real, I got real pumped until it just turned into like evil vine men. evil vines. Yeah. It kind of makes sense of the mansion for them to be evil vines. Like, you know, it's surrounded by all this foliage everywhere. Uh, we we also find out that the collars that the civilians are wearing uh, tighten as the Giamato get closer. So it's sort of a, you know, obviously it's a danger, but it's kind of a warning system as well. It's like when Nemesis walks too close to you. Yeah, exactly. In Resident Evil. We also get a really cool um, li- little sequence, I guess we'll say, of the beat and boost buckle geats so he takes the the beat buckle from neon for a second and again he looks just as cool in it with the guitar and stuff he wipes out all the geomato but not the riders they they kind of go down but then they sort of revive and they do this like incredibly creepy 
like their body contorts in a weird way as they like raise themselves back up and it's it's it genuinely creeped me out (laughs) (laughs) um it was it was very effective as far as um uh, a visual goes so i guess it makes sense since they can trade and stuff but uh geats didn't just like like neon didn't give him the buckle he took it off her driver and put it on his and that seems like that should almost be illegal that you can just pull the buckle off somebody and like use it. But I guess whatever. If you, if you remember Buffa did it to the old guy in the the previous episode, because he, he took the ninja buckle and then he started fighting with it. So yeah, it's happened twice in two episodes. <laughs> and I agree. It feels like it feels akin to friendly fire. Like, you you know, like I'm leaving you defenseless by just yanking a buckle out. I feel <laughs> like they should lock in when you're using them or something. But apparently it's apparently it's all good. And, you know, Ace is, is such a good guy now. He's going to give it back. No big deal. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> he definitely doesn't wear it the rest of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at this point, the fight moves inside to the mansion. And um, the evil writers, the Geometer writers come inside as well. And this is the point where I wrote down, oh, it's Resident Evil? Question mark. Because <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time you kind of see the map and, and get split up into different different parties. Uh, the yeah, Game that- Master. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh yeah, like this was the part where I was like, I know this looks familiar to me. I need to figure out what the hell this is supposed to be. But yeah, like the Resident Evil, like you said. Yeah, because yeah, the fancy mansion too is very on the nose uh, as well. But the the game master kind of calls them down and says the Geometo are constantly evolving when they try to report that you know, hey, these these Geometo are riders. What are we doing? He tells them that they're going to send down some new loot. So he launches some buckles down, drops them down in the same way that the 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 common riders sort of fell. The platform disappears and then just like drops them down. Unfortunately, though, it seems like the the most of the buckles like land out in the yard and the Geomato sort of just roll up and pick them up themselves. Uh, yeah, now, so, we, now we know that they can use buckles. They're just like, hey, yeah. loot upgrades. <laughs> I'll take this. This sounds good. The the game master does like he i think he, he calls but he, he says why are uncoded events occurring uncoded events which i thought so, was an interesting phrasing that might be important later and then see, damn when you don't have programmers <laughs> shit, shit goes downhill <laughs> yeah <laughs> no one no one wrote this code then we get what uh should be should have been like a big end of episode cliffhanger but we get it here in the middle of the episode we find out we get this amazing shot. We see a greenhouse. As we're looking at the greenhouse, we kind of pan over to kind Boy. of a so yeah. Even right before that, uh, Game Master takes his mask off, looks dismayed that the uncoded things are happening, and yeah. he makes a second phone call to blank, and then we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we're, we're in this greenhouse. It it pans over, and we see a whole bunch of unused common rider uh drivers just like stacked in these pallet things and then we find out basically in this greenhouse they're growing geomato so there's a gardener and he's like talking to the geomato My like sweet oh, babies <laughs> yeah you're gonna grow up so big and strong yeah oh, you're, you're doing so great he's doing baby talk to this geomato and the geomato that we see is in like bud form so it's kind of in the shape of a geomato head but there's like you know little tiny arms and legs sticking out and it looks like kind of a flower that is just opened up or something like that and then we sort of pan up and we see above him it's like a whole bunch of those like hundreds and hundreds of geomato that are that are growing in this greenhouse and there's farm. this like there's a bag of common rider id cores at the at, at his feet too so, so the, so the, much <laughs> i know yeah like rapid thing ever i like i put down like this is the dopest cutaway ever and then i was looking at it and now that again as i watch it the second time where i can pause and reflect more so you should just watch it straight through the first time so all the cores are actually cracked and broken that oh, are in okay. the bag that he's that he has because at first i just thought they were normal cores and i just put Me like too. i thought i put just put like is he like growing the cores in them so they can do this but looking at it now, they're all broken cores. So it's probably ones from the people that died. Like whenever someone dies or gets eliminated, maybe yeah. he takes the broken buckle when they shatter and then he rebuilt, he grows Giamoto with them. 
do, do you think that's like a um is it like a doomsday scenario where like you know you know in in the comics in in batman or in batman sorry in superman doomsday was a villain where basically they sent him out in this really harsh environment he got killed instantly they went and scraped up his cells that were left over cloned him again and then he went out and lasted like half a second longer and then they scraped up the cells and cloned him again and every time they cloned him he sort of had learned from his previous experiences so eventually you know he evolved to have tougher skin so he could survive longer and spikes on his shoulders so he could you know the things that were trying to attack him hurt themselves instead of hurting him is it that where it's like oh this Giamato died to the common rider doing this thing so now we're going to use this id course and so the new next common rider batch can like learn from those mistakes i wonder it could i i think it would either be that or only because if we're going to lead and in, lean into the this is a weird coding error. Is this guy like an ex programmer kind of thing of the Desire Grand Prix games, but like went rogue because he was like, fuck these stupid games and just like steals the Brad stuff now to make more Giamoto? Oh, I, I don't know. I mean, like, clearly, clearly the game master n- knows this guy's doing this, right? Like, he, he called him. No, but see, well, he made a phone call. That's true. So he, you're saying he might, he knows this guy exists, but he might not know about the Giamato growth, or or maybe, uh, or uh, it's it's hard to tell because like is, when, yeah. like when I say like he made a phone call, like he could have been calling anybody at that point, That's and true. we don't know. But they just obviously edited it to make it look like he was calling the gardener guy, but the gardener guy could be like so hardcore rogue out of it that maybe he doesn't even know that he's there. That he has like a secret greenhouse with a secret uh-huh. high powered Giamato for no reason. Or a I, reason yeah. to be revealed down the road, but I didn't think about that. Yeah, I, I my mind obviously, and this is kind of the ed- where the editing wants you to go, was that like the game master is in on this. Like this isn't, you know, uh, th- th- these aren't just like random monsters that are attacking the the earth. They're being grown by the people who are running the games for some reason, and like clearly, it's all this big conspiracy. Um. But it clearly is a big conspiracy. There's something something involved. But like, yeah, I guess we technically don't yet know that the game master is like pure evil. <laughs> we know that he's hiding stuff. We know he's trying to take out Geats, but we don't know whether he knows about the Giamato yet. Because it's even like because even he said like, oh, this is an emergency. I'll give you better things. So it seems like they have contingency plans for like when shit goes accidentally wrong. Yeah, but maybe not on purpose wrong. And and he. Like, because yeah. even like follow the rule still, he was like, okay, well, this isn't working the way it's supposed to. I'll make sure you guys are still like even, even keeled with them. But it wasn't like he gave him some super OP thing. He didn't pull him out of the situation. He was just like, uh, I don't know what else to do. I'll try to make you guys at least have a fair fight with him. Yeah, for sure. It, yeah, the, this, this scene, again, we still like don't know very much about it, but it felt like that scene in the matrix where you finally like, get to see what the real world sort of looks like where neon wakes up or not, not neon, sorry, where Neo wakes up um, and, and like he p- pulls out the thing and he's all bald and in the goo and stuff. It was like, like, Whoa, what's going on here? <laughs> what's the nature of this world? Uh, there's, there's so many questions. Yeah. Like who's that guy? Why are we growing these things? Is the game master super involved? Why did he have the, the drivers there? Like what, is that for just making the rider Giamato or something else? Like, yeah, there's, there's a lot going on, but it, I, again, couldn't believe this whole scene was dropped just in the middle of this episode and we have so much more to go. Yeah. Like this, like this could have been easily the end of it. Like if they recut this just a little bit, yeah, everything could have happened the exact same way it does. And then just cut the other part at the end. But Instead, we cut back to the mansion. Everybody has uh, amassed in the dining hall, I guess I'll say. They are um, kind of comparing like the pictures that are hanging there. There's pictures that have these weird symbols next to them, which is also what the door to get out uh, required for its code. And Neon is kind of quizzing Ace. So she asked him uh, basically like what the Game Master is. And 
Um, Neon tells Ace that she thinks her dad knows more than he's telling her. She thinks he knows something about the game. So this is the part that reclicked earlier where I uh-huh. said I didn't want to jump ahead. Because with that statement, that makes perfect sense why her dad in the beginning was like, when her, when her mom was like, well, what did that girl even give her? And he was like, I was going to tell you someday. So like his dad, her dad definitely is tied into it. Like he literally yeah. knows what all this is. And like it just, that part didn't click before okay. until rewatching it and seeing that scene again. And I was like, oh shit, this is definitely what he meant. <laughs> yeah, like he, he, let, he let Sumi in that day knowing full well like clearly what she was about, what she was doing. And then, yeah, that scene with the mom was really a confirmation of he knew, he knows exactly what's going on and what Neon has been up to um, for, for some reason. Ace says uh, at this point, he says, Oh, your, your dad, he's the head of the Karama conglomerate, right? <laughs> and she's like, yeah. And he says, uh, I guess we should look into him then. <laughs> yeah. So it's pretty much like Jeff Bezos made some crazy murder game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i wonder i wonder for sure if uh if the dad won't be very evil and also the boss of it but ace also like was very aware of the karama conglomerate so i don't know if that was just because he knows neon just because it's a big company or because he already suspected these things that neon is saying <laughs> mystery <laughs> and, third reason mystery fourth reason exactly the Giamato bust into the dining hall, finds them again, very resident evil, got the big ax, the, the scythe rather, and just like are swinging it and dragging it along the ground as they're walking. Very, very cool stuff. Um, Punk Jack finds one of the loot buckles. He's outside. Um, he, uh, he picks it up, but Sumi then confirms that looks like the Giamato took the rest of the drops. So right now Punk Jack is the only one who has one. And then Buffa, oh. Go ahead, sorry. With a driver, though, we should reflect. We should talk about the dri- the new buckle real quick. Yep. It's again super Toby fantastic. It is a <laughs> slot machine, or yeah, it's we, a slot machine vibe. <laughs> we we get to see the full transformation with uh, Geats later on, but it is, yeah, it has a little slot machine in it. <laughs> it has the the spinning spinning reels of the slot machine, which is super cool. And like as far as like you know t- turning these things into toys that you can buy and play with like i love no, that each one, one. <laughs> of them, yeah i love that each one of them has uh a very unique gimmick right like the monster buckle has eyeballs uh the beat buckle has the little keyboard keys uh the you know the the slot machine here we've got the ninja one who's got like the spinning little ninja star on it like they've all got really really cool gimmicks that are very different where you know, I, I know this is your first common writer, but like in years past, they they, they kind of you know change it up a bit every year, sort of how the the driver works. But a lot of times, it's it's pretty much the same gimmick every time, just with like a different color or you know maybe a slightly different look, but it still functions the same way. Okay. And these are the most unique you know attachments to the driver that I, I think I've ever seen. Gotcha. Uh, which is which is fun. And usually, like at the end of a series, you'll get one that's like really wild, and we're getting the really wild ones like in episode ten and eleven, which is which is cool. Punk Jack and, and Sumi are you know talking about the plans basically to take out Geats. Buffa finds them and hears this and uh, says he knew the pairings were fishy, and he asks why they're trying to get rid of Geats. So Buffa is clued in to the uh, the scenario. And also when Buffa walks in, uh, Pump Jack is changing. So apparently the the blocks on the pictures, which was the keys to the puzzle, apparently the blocks or the name tags for them, whatever, can get pulled out of the wall. So yep. Pump Jack is currently rotating all the puzzle pieces to make the answer not the right answer. That, that was my question. I, I couldn't tell if that was what he was doing. He was like making it harder to win or... I guess that, that was probably what it was. Cause I was wondering if it wasn't just like a language barrier thing. Like are these letters that I just can't read and he's doing something different, but you're right. He was probably just screwing it up. <laughs> so like, when, so like the one that Geats kind of figured out first was you saw a picture of sunflowers and the first symbol that doesn't look like, uh, like Japanese writing or anything. It looks, they kind of look like 
almost like cherries or music notes, but like fuzzy and weird. Yeah. Like he saw the sunflower picture and he was like, oh, sunflowers. And like they zoomed in on the first part of the block. I think it matched or it looked like okay. it matched or maybe part of it did. So that's why I think later at Pump Jack started pulling the pieces out and rotating them because then obviously any of the other answers would be incorrect in some way, shape or form. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I am sure we'll learn more about that probably next episode and what horrible ways he's he's screwed them. K Waz continues to be kind of a sad sack here. Uh at one point Ace and Neon kind of talking about it says this isn't the K Wa I remember. <laughs> and then uh we get another like wonderful bit of lore about this series. Because um, you know, with Neon saying, like, this is not how K Wa was. Like what's what's going on? Like he you know, was determined, was wishing for world peace, all this stuff. Ace tells her that when you lose the game, when you lose as a common writer and go back to your regular life and you lose your memories, you lose more than just your memories. You also lose the will to wish for what you originally wrote on your Desire Grand Prix card. So in, in Kawa's case, he's lost the will to wish for world peace. <laughs> Which apparently was also what was his main driver in life in general, which yeah. is why he's a uh, degenerate gambler now. Yeah, he's just he's gone full degen, doing his scratchers uh, because he literally can't wish for world peace anymore. He's lost the ability to, which you know, in in games like this, in like battle royale type games, there's there's always sort of the other the other shoe that drops that is like the extra danger. So like, yes, when you lose in this game, you go back to your real life, but like you lose the thing that was the most motivating to you, right? The thing you wanted more than anything in the world, you lose the ability to wish for it. So essentially, yeah, you're alive, but like now you're just a broken person. (laughs) So I was going back and forth on this as we're, we're talking about it. And I'm not sure. So I'm going to sound it out anyway. So at first Neon realizes like, this is why I didn't remember what Neon TV was and why I was different after that. I lost the first game, but I was going to just say now from us talking about it, maybe that's why Geats can't wish to see his mom. But if he still has the drive to wish for his mom, I don't think that was the case that he would have lost at that point then. Yeah. Cause at yeah. first we were talking, I was going to say like, Oh, maybe he lost looking for his mom once so he can't wish for it again but he still has the drive that seems to be his main motivator in all of this so i guess he couldn't have lost that specific wish yet yeah i don't think he would have yeah because like it's still like you said clearly a driving force for him here the th- main thing he's he's focused on and also probably it seems like it matters to like kawa lost and was eliminated whereas you know neon and buffa lost because geats won like they 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 still existed in the game as as geats won so like maybe that matters too like maybe maybe buffa i I guess his his is weird too because his was like i want common riders to die and then he lost his memory so that probably doesn't affect him too much day to day anymore if he doesn't know what common riders are (laughs) yeah i guess that's i guess that's yeah that's i guess that's probably fair do we see Neon's new wish when she um, came back or no? I, she, she told us that it was to find true love. I think we saw her card as well. Okay. There, there's a scene in the lounge where she's talking about having the wish. And I'm pretty sure they show the card and it's kind of the same thing to like to find true love. Okay. So maybe cause since she got to go back, she yeah. remembers, but like, yeah. she, I don't know. Cause she kind of played coy the whole time or like she didn't, I guess, I guess just because the streaming thing never came up until now, I guess we wouldn't have really known. But now she's like, oh, this is why I don't want to stream anymore, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So yeah, maybe she, she, she kind just of didn't explains. care until. And we saw last episode where she's like, she's clearly a different person. Like she's like willing to go along with like this marriage thing with her mom and stuff. So, you know, she it seems like something had changed for her for sure. But but clearly getting the buckle back and getting to rejoin the game, let her like care again about her wish and same with buffa right he he was able to write the same thing down on the card so he was able to wish for that again uh, but that was i think only because they were both reselected but super interesting so yeah i guess k will have to rejoin the game 
uh, to become not a <laughs> not a horrible degenerate person. <laughs> uh, the old guy uh, at this point tries to become a hero. He tries to do it, Toby. He he's trying to save the civilians while I think Geats does some fighting. He heads tries to head down some stairs, but there are more Giamato at the bottom of the stairs. And then he says, "Everyone has their time to go." <laughs> And he transforms ready to fight. He does this big like flex motion as he, as he transforms, he dives down to the fight and basically gets killed super easily (laughs) or or get, he gets taken out pretty easily. It doesn't quite get, get killed completely. And it's crazy because like starting at this point, there are so many different, like we were talking kind of, they were talking about earlier. Like it's almost like a movie with the way the soundtrack starts working. Where like every part has like emotional like music swells and like it adapts to what's going on and like it's the most like audio heavy cinematic part that I think we've seen for a while too. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, I do, I do remember that back now. Yeah, it was it was very, very well done and very compelling. Like I love the old guy got his moment, he got his big score. Like you're saying, he, yeah, like I said, obviously gets taken out. Ace and Neon jump down to kind of pull him to safety. And then Ace gets one of the new buckles as well. So he he finally gets one from one of the Giamato. And we're going to get to see it here in a second. The old guy, of course, has like a moment of like, I did it because they couldn't let you kids die before a set of old bones like me. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, we, we get to see the, the transformation sequence with the, with the buckle. So it is a slot machine, as you said, does full on, you know, uh fever jackpot golden fever i think it's called uh in the transformation sequence and then it is just this like golden scarf <laughs> it's like lady a, luck because he because he called upon the power of lady luck yep yeah so yeah it's not it's not super showy like it there's not a lot of like plastic pieces associated with it it's just this like awesome scarf and it seems like its powers just make him lucky like you said called upon lady luck like I couldn't really discern anything specifically he was doing differently other than like just maybe being a little lucky in terms of like dodging hits and stuff. Yeah. Like it just, it just seemed like maybe it upped his motivation a little bit more or like, yeah. Cause like the, the fight proceeding when that happens, like he doesn't, there's no special ending move. There's no like super tricks. I didn't think it was yeah. just like, he just like just motivated the fight with cool slow down special effects. Yeah, and th- this particular sequence after he transforms and he has the scarf on is some of the coolest choreography that we've seen. I think since like the zombie episodes, where um, just insane stuff happens. He that th- we have this really awesome uh, spin shot where it sort of zooms all around Geats. And it even like goes through the camera goes through the exhaust of the boost buckle and like distorts the view for a second. Um, it's very cool. It's, it's very akin to the other, you know, rotate around shot that we got a few episodes ago. Um, but this, this one again is very cool. Like the last one, very good, good looking CGI. And then he brings in the bike. The bike comes in from the roof and he, he rides around on it for a little bit. He does like the Akira slide with it. And then <laughs> he uses it as a weapon. It like kind of transforms a little bit. He swings it around his head like a big weapon and just like smashes the, the Geometa with it. Super freaking cool. <laughs> and yeah, the, uh, the, the buckle itself is called is the golden fever victory. That's sort of the big, the big finish that happens. Okay. And just like old times, Toby, the, the boost buckle flies off and nearly kills KW. <laughs> Some things never change. <laughs> uh, all that happens. Kewa and Kewa seemingly has uh, deja vu about nearly dying, and then the Giamato transforms once again. It, not not dead. Um, the I, th- I think a different Giamato maybe picks up the buckle and sort of takes over the role as the Giamato rider. So even though he did this big, huge, insane move, all this like badass stuff didn't actually solve anything, and that's our big cliffhanger ending. Back to square one for next week. Yeah. I cannot wait for the next episode. Like we were talking about that, you know, that middle part with the whole Giamato, you know, growery that's happening there. I want to know everything about it. <laughs> and I, I can't wait. I can't wait to find out more. 
they, they did a very good job by keeping the hype alive. They did. Yeah. I, I, you know, it felt like they were revealing a lot and like telling us a lot about ACE and like everybody was becoming friends super quickly. And I was like, man, are they going to just like run this? Is this show going to like run out of ideas this quickly? Uh, but no, no, we got some new ones. <laughs> we're, we're growing the bad guys in a greenhouse and maybe all the good guys are involved in it. Who knows? <laughs> Everyone's a bastard. Everyone is indeed. Any other final thoughts, Toby, about Common Order Geeks episode 11? No, I, I like, we, like we said, I think this is like the most full blown, like this could almost be a movie episode type of vibe. Like this was like the whole thing was just solid. Uh, one of the things I mentally thought to myself when I was watching, when it was over, I was like, this one as like, not so much the fight parts, because those are kind of the generic things at this point. But like, this is definitely one of like, lots of like key pieces of everything to discuss, to like break down more than some of the other stuff we talked about. Yeah. Absolutely. And like lots of, you know, as any great show would be lots of really good reveals that lead to like even more questions than before. Yeah. This felt like the one where like, if you were telling someone to watch the show, you would say like, Oh, it's good. You'll like it. But like, just wait till you get to episode 11, right? Like (laughs) you get, you get there and then you're really going to be hooked for the rest of the series. Yeah. (laughs) That's, that's what it felt like. But yeah, I hope that, uh, as you're saying, like everything felt a little bit bigger, a little bit different, a little bit more cinematic with this episode. I hope that vibe continues. I hope that's them hitting their stride, figuring out their production pipeline and all that stuff. And I hope that that is like the continual level of quality that we keep getting. I hope so too. Cause when like there was a gap from like four to five or five to six, I think where they went from like all the cool bullet timey kind of shots and the next one was like the worst cgi ever <laughs> yep so i'm really hoping this wasn't the one where like we're gonna spend extra money on this one and the next two are be shit <laughs> <laughs> we will see <laughs> uh if you want to check out all of our past episodes uh so you can hear all of our discussion about this show to date uh you can do that we have a video version of our podcast you can find that by going to commonridersucks.com um, you can check out that it leads you to the playlist for the uh, YouTube channel, uh, which has all of our past episodes. You can also just search for the comment writers on your favorite podcast app to download the audio version uh, or do both. So we're then we're with you wherever you go. All the places in your all ears and your eyes. Uh, and also, you know, we talked about it last episode. Um, leave comments there in the YouTube version love reading those and and we'll highlight them here on the show uh when discussion like that comes up uh reply to us on twitter and stuff if you have things to say reach out we love hearing from you guys as you're watching and listening to these episodes and as we talk about this i'm thinking about it and since we do have an audio only version i think i have to buy email on that common writer sex domain and then people can email us at whatever at common writer so that's gonna be my goal before episode 12 okay Great. Perfect. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll, we'll get that set up and we'll have an actual, a real email address. People can, can, can write in. That'll be exciting. And we did get that email address set up. It is cast at commonwritersucks.com. All right. Uh, where can the people find you on the internet when you're not talking about Common Writer, Toby? On Twitter, it's at Life of Tobes, T-O-B-E-S. And on YouTube, you can find me at Tobes Plays, where I play lots and lots of video games. Right on. You also find me on Twitter at Pretty Dece Josh and also on Tumblr. I've been spending a lot of time there, which is also at Pretty Dece Josh, P R E T T Y D E C E J O S H. So, again, we'll be back for episode 11, hopefully with an email address and hopefully with another uh, exciting episode. I mean, episode 12, by the way. We hope you will come back as well to join us once again. Until then, have a great week. I'm taking shots at the enemy I'm gonna make it to the top, leave a legacy If I got something to say, you better let me speak Turn it up a new degree, bitch, you ain't seen anything I pop off with the new rock, electro